welcome back to Amashiroi Recap. Today, I will recap Dog Days. The story is about a junior high school student named Shinku Izumi, a sports genius who always trains to win athletic tournaments. In another world called Flaniard, there are Galette Kingdom troops led by Leo intending to attack the kingdom of Biscotti. The commander of the enemy troops is powerful, and no one in Biscotti can fight her. Therefore, Princess Milhir used her last resort by summoning a hero from another world. After school, Shinku took a shortcut because he was in a hurry to get home to catch a plane. But a dog was carrying a sword and watching him. Suddenly, he opened a portal to another world. Shinku entered the portal, and Princess Milhir was waiting for him. Shinku was shocked to see the girl's appearance before him, she had ears and a tail like a dog. Milhir explained that Shinku was a hero. She asked Shinku to help the Biscotti Kingdom fight against the Galette Kingdom led by Leo. Knowing this, Shinku accepted the request and immediately jumped into battle. The battle in this Flaniard world is unique. The way to defeat the enemy is to hit it hard or touch its head and back. Every time they defeat an enemy, they will get points, and the one with the highest points will win the war. Apparently, it is a way of fighting between the two kingdoms so that there is no bloodshed. Shinku's ability and agility manage to defeat the enemy troops quickly. This makes people who see it so impressed. At the same time, the commander of the Galette Kingdom, who saw the hero's prowess, immediately decided to enter the battlefield. On the other hand, Shinku met with the captain of the Knight's Guard named Eclair. Shinku asked her to teach him the emblem ability, which is the emblem ability that uses life energy. Eclair immediately showed Shinku how to release the emblem ability. But suddenly, someone attacked them from a distance, it turned out to be Commander Leo. The two of them must immediately stop Leo. Unfortunately, their cooperation is terrible, both hit each other and fall. Seeing that opportunity, Leo used her emblem ability so strongly that it made a big explosion around the arena. Everything around her was destroyed, but Shinku and Eclair managed to avoid the blast by jumping into the air. Then, they jointly launched a counterattack, so they managed to strip Leo's equipment, leaving only her underwear. Because Leo did not want to fight with her underwear, she also withdrew from the fight. Finally, the Biscotti Kingdom received a 350-point bonus for defeating the general. Leo promised to avenge her defeat in the next battle. In addition, it turned out that Shinku's previous attack accidentally hit Eclair, which destroyed her clothes, and the soldiers there saw a beautiful performance from Eclair. After Biscotti won the battle, Shinku was asked to attend the victory concert, where the princess would sing. But Shinku said that he had to go home or contact his family first. But Roland told him that once summoned, a hero could not return to their world anymore. Hearing this, Shinku's face immediately turned pale. And even worse, it turned out that the princess did not know this either. A royal researcher named Riko is looking for a way for Shinku to return to his world. Shinku was with Eclair, touring the city while telling him that yesterday's war was just a way of diplomacy between countries. So that no people or participants were injured, you could say that the war was just an athletic activity and a festival. But some battles can really make people die, especially battles against demons. Then they met Riko. Shinku wanted to return to his world in 16 days to attend the athletic tournament. Riko promised to find a way for Shinku to return to his world on time. Then, Shinku asks for help to make a device to find his smartphone's signal. They went to a hero summoning shrine and used a device to get a signal. Surprisingly, it worked, and Shinku immediately contacted his friends and family to tell them that he was fine and would be back soon. One hour before Biscotti's victory concert, Princess Milhir was suddenly kidnapped by an army led by Leo's younger brother Gaul. They challenged Shinku to meet them. It seems that Gaul was curious about Shinku's strength, which is why he wanted to fight him. Shinku accepted the challenge and immediately headed to the battlefield with Eclair and Riko. 
Despite being a hostage, Milhir was treated well by Gaul. Milhir is actually Leo's childhood friend, but they haven't met for a long time. On the other hand, Shinku and Eclair tried to save Milhir as quickly as possible by attacking from the front gate, while Rico launched a cannon and managed to eliminate the troops guarding the front gate. Thanks to that, they were able to enter the fort, but their action was stopped by a general named Godwin. Although they were cornered, they also received sudden help. Miss Dalkian had just returned from her mission. She was one of the most powerful knights in Viscotti. Even with a single slash, she could cut through a huge fortress. There was also a ninja named Yukikaze, who defeated an army of soldiers with one attack. <laughs> Then she and Rico threw fireworks at the enemy troops. At the same time, Eclair and Shinku managed to break into the palace. Finally, Shinku met Gaul. Shinku immediately attacked because he had to save Princess Milhir immediately. They fought each other using emblem abilities and life energy. Gaul, with his double claw move, started beating Shinku. But Gaul is a stupid kid, so he hurt himself instead. Seeing how Gaul used his life energy, Shinku tried to do it too, turning his broken stick into a sword. Shinku attacks Gaul while saying to end the battle immediately because the concert is about to start. Hearing about the concert confused Gaul. It seemed that Gaul didn't know that the Biscotti Kingdom was holding their victory concert. On the other hand, when Miss Dalkian was fighting Godwin, Leo suddenly came to the place. Leo asked Dalkian to stay away because she wanted to meet with Gaul. Unfortunately, they were still in battle, so Dalkian wouldn't let Leo get past her. Finally, Leo fought against Miss Dalkian. Their fight was very fierce, but Leo used her emblem ability and managed to defeat Miss Dalkian. Godwin praised Leo's greatness for defeating Miss Dalkian. But Leo explained that Miss Dalkian was not fighting seriously, she only used 20% of her original strength. Then Leo immediately went to meet Gaul with Shinku and scolded them both. Even Leo also beat up the three stupid girls who had kidnapped Princess Milhir. Leo is upset because they have been disrespectful and disrupted the Biscotti Kingdom's victory concert. Leo apologized to Princess Milhir for her younger brother's stupidity. Although the battle was over, Princess Milhir would be late for her concert. Then Shinku got an idea, he used life energy to make his run quickly. He carried Princess Milhir, and at the same time, Yukikaze followed them like she could also run fast and offered her help. But Shinku declined the offer because he could increase his speed by forming the hero's weapon into a rocket that could make him fly at super speed. Thanks to that, Princess Milhir got to the concert venue on time and sang on stage to entertain her subjects with her golden voice. They all loved her singing so much that even Shinku, who was exhausted, was happy that the princess concert went well. A few days later, the knights were rewarded for their achievements in battle. Eclair was instrumental in saving the princess from a kidnapping incident. As a reward, Milhir stroked Eclair's head, and she was pleased because it was a great honor. Later, Shinku and Eclair practiced together, their battle was great and impressed the other soldiers. After training, Shinku tried to pet Eclair's head, but she blushed and beat him. Afterward, Shinku visited Miss Dalkian's residence with Yukikaze, and they chatted while eating lunch together. Yukikaze asked if Shinku wanted to return to his world or stay with them. Yukikaze also learned that heroes can return if they have fulfilled their duty. After hearing the good news, Shinku was relieved and excited. After that, Shinku met Princess Milhir, and they spent time together talking to each other. Then Shinku asked why he was chosen to be a hero. Milhir replied that she saw Shinku's performance during an athletic tournament. Seeing Shinku's hard work and sincerity convinced Milhir to choose him as a hero. Shinku was embarrassed because he got second place. He lost to his rival, and Shinku even cried because of the defeat. In Galette's palace, Leo can see the prophecy in the future. Leo seems to be trying to change the prophecy, but her attempt fails. It turns out that Shinku and Milhir will die within 30 days, and it is written that the prophecy cannot be changed. Knowing about the prophecy, Leo would not let it happen. The next day, Leo announced to all corners that they would return to war with the Kingdom of Biscotti. Leo also prepared many prizes for the participants to attract public interest and enthusiasm. 
Leo even challenged to bet two divine swords belonging to the Galette kingdom and wanted by Scotty to bet two of their divine swords. Hearing this, the officials immediately held a meeting, questioning Leo's actions as if she wanted to seize the kingdom of by Scotty. In the declaration of war, the winner has the right to carry divine swords and is free to use them at will for 60 days. The officials felt something was strange and wanted to reject the declaration of war. But to maintain their pride, by Scotty finally accepted the war. On the other hand, Gaul met Shinku. He explained that he was challenging the war and tried to get an explanation from Leo. Unfortunately, Leo did not listen to him and still wanted to fight. So, Gaul could only ask Shinku to win the war. After that, Shinku met Amelita, Milhir's personal assistant. Amelita said that Milhir and Leo used to be close friends. When Milhir became ruler, Leo was always worried about her condition and tried to help improve security around her. But three months earlier, Leo's attitude suddenly changed. She stopped having a relationship with Milhir, which made her sad. The battle finally began. By Scotty's royal troops numbered 20,000, while Galette's army numbered 23,000. Then Leo explained the previous prophecy to her subordinates, and it turned out that the people who died were the Excelide and Palladian users. To prevent the two of them from dying, Leo must seize the Divine Sword so that the prophecy of their death does not occur. To ensure her plan succeeded, Leo ordered her subordinates to infiltrate by Scotty's main headquarters and steal Excelide's Divine Weapon. On the other hand, the Galette troops focused their attacks on Shinku on the battlefield because they wanted to seize his divine swords on Leo's orders. Unfortunately, Shinku and Eclair managed to trounce them all. Knowing they were after his divine swords, Shinku used a normal weapon instead. At the same time, Leo's subordinates attacked by Scotty's headquarters, they managed to infiltrate there. Unfortunately, Milhir, who was there, was Rico in disguise. They managed to trick them, but it turned out that the real Milhir was with Shinku. Milhir realized that Leo had hidden something from her. Therefore, Milhir intended to meet her, they rushed to the castle where Leo was. As the battle intensified, Miss Dalkian blocked the troops who wanted to cross the bridge alone. Her emblem's ability is extraordinary, she can knock out all the enemies with a single attack. Since the enemy troops had retreated, Miss Dalkian intended to go to the opposing castle. But the opposing knight commander, Bernard, would not let that happen. Fortunately, the Biscotti knight commander Roland arrived there. He would fight Bernard, so Miss Dalkian could go to the opposing castle. On the other hand, the Prince of Gaul's troops managed to arrive at the Biscotti headquarters, and he and his troops managed to defeat the soldiers there. At the same time, Rico wanted to go to Shinku's place, but she was shot by enemy troops, making her clothes destroyed. However, a knight managed to counter the attack, and Rico was able to escape from the place. Shinku and the others made it to Galette Castle. The guards there used cannons to stop them, but Shinku used a shield and deflected the cannons. The Claire launched her attack and managed to defeat all the guards there. They began to enter the castle and found out that Leo was at the top of the building, so Milhir told Shinku and Eclair to wait for her while she met Leo herself. Seeing the arrival of Milhir, who shouldn't have been there, surprised Leo. She felt that this was the moment the prophecy would happen. Even Milhir brought two divine weapons belonging to Biscotti. Milhir wanted to know what Leo was hiding and the reason behind this war. But suddenly, the stage where they stood was lifted into the sky. It turned out that this was caused by the emergence of a demon that was once sealed in the earth. The demon appeared due to the weakening of Flaniard's power in that place due to bad weather. The demon reacted when he saw Milhir's divine weapon. He immediately launched his attack. Knowing that Leo tried to protect her, Leo was caught off guard, and Milhir tried to save Leo from the demon's attack and ended up being injured and captured by the demon. Seeing the prophecy actually happen right in front of her made Leo angry. She focused all her strength on attacking the demon but couldn't do it. <laughs> Leo fell unconscious. A servant tried to treat her at the same time Shinku and Eclair arrived there. After knowing what happened, they rushed after the demon. 
If not rescued immediately, Milhir would die because her life energy was sucked by the demon. Despite exerting all his strength, they still couldn't reach him. Fortunately, Eclair used her emblem ability to throw Shinku, and got to the top of the demon's body. Shinku struggled to get to Milhir's place. At the same time, Milhir's consciousness met the spirit of the fox. She explained that her son was pierced by the demon's sword, and it turned him into a demon. But someone managed to seal him away with the power of Milhir's divine weapon. After hundreds of years, the seal weakened and made him wake up feeling the power of the divine weapon. The only way to save him was to take the demon sword stuck in his body. After Milhir was freed from the cocoon, the divine sword healed her and restored Shinku's power. They both tried to take the demon sword stuck in the demon's body. After successfully taking it, the demon's body is destroyed, while the fox cub is freed. But the demon sword fought back against Shinku. Fortunately, Leo launched her attack from a distance and hit the demon sword. The sword still seems to show signs of life, and Miss Dalkian and Yukikaze arrive at the place. They immediately sealed the demon sword. They have been guarding the land from demons that harm humans and sealed hundreds of demons on their way. After the sealing was complete, Yukikaze met the others at the castle. Then Milhir handed the fox cub to Yukikaze and asked her to take good care of it. Leo apologized to all the citizens for the chaos and promised to be a better leader. To replace the cancelled battle, they held festivals and concerts. This was enthusiastically welcomed by the residents. In the evening, Leo met Milhir. Leo wanted to be frank about the reason for her changing nature all this time, but Milhir said that she had learned from Leo's subordinates. Milhir was happy that Leo didn't hate her. Then Milhir scolded Leo for believing too much in the prophecy, and finally, they became friends again. After the concert began, the residents and other soldiers enjoyed it, and even the previous fox used his power to liven the concert. Everything became peaceful, and they returned to their respective kingdoms while Rico and other researchers managed to find a way to return Shinku to his home world. But something makes Rico sad because conditions must be met to return Shinku to his world. Shinku will forget all their memories, and after he returns home, he will not be able to return to the world of Flaniard. Rico told him that the ritual would be performed in three days. Knowing this, Shinku asked Rico to keep the conditions of his return a secret from everyone. After that, Shinku spent his last time in Flaniard playing with the princess, stopping by Miss Dalkian's place with Yukikaze to visit the previous fox. It was revealed that Yukikaze was the daughter of the Earth God, which is why she had the extraordinary power to seal demons. Meanwhile, Miss Dalkian is just an ordinary human, but she can live for a long time for several reasons. Shinku was asked to make a farewell speech the day before his return. On that occasion, Shinku thanked the people who had helped him during his time in Flaniard. Shinku also promised to return if they needed his help, even though Shinku knew that he was lying because he would never be able to return to Flaniard. Shinku was asked to return the divine sword he had been using to the princess. Shinku also gave his belongings to his friends as a memento. Eclair realized that Shinku could not return to Flaniard, but Shinku promised not to forget them and would return one day. Then the ritual began, and the princess could not hide her sadness. She begged Shinku not to leave because Milhir loved him and wanted to be with him forever. But it was too late, the ritual went smoothly, and Shinku returned to his world. After returning to his world, Shinku looked sad while shedding tears. He felt he had forgotten something important. Unfortunately, he could not remember it. Even so, Shinku is still eager to live and take a family vacation while meeting his friend, his rival, in the athletics tournament. On the other hand, Rico is still looking for a way to bring Shinku to the world of Flaniard. Then, a Gaul subordinate named Noir brought a book from the Galette Royal Library about summoning heroes. In the book, there is an important note about hero summoning. It is stated that the hero who has been returned to his world can be summoned again as long as he has a close relationship with his previous summoner. The hero must also leave his personal belongings and promise to return them to the three people in the world. 
The most important thing is that the hero must make an official agreement. Unexpectedly, Shinku had written a letter to the princess just before he left. Knowing this, Riko cheered because they could call Shinku back to the world of Flaniard. On the other hand, Shinku was walking alone when he suddenly saw a mysterious dog. The dog then approached him and gave him the Biscotti Divine Sword Ring he used to wear. After touching the ring, Shinku's memory of the Flaniard world returned. He was overjoyed and invited his best friend to go together one day. And that is the end of the video, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.